Harvest Festival happens every year during the Halloween season. It's really a safe alternative to the Halloween, uh, to a Halloween party. And we do it at our church and we invite our community to, be, to participate in it. It's like a carnival games, there's cotton candy and moon bounces, and it's really just a way for our, our church members to have an alternative to Halloween. But more importantly, we call it a bridge event where our church members can invite their unchurched friends to a church event. Well, maybe there might be a switch inside, I think. Hmm. Whoa. Well, typically, because our congregation is a large congregation and it's multi-staffed, I typically, as one of the associate pa pastors, oversee the, the Harvest Festival. But at the same time, we have a commitment from several major um, volunteers in, the com in our congregation who volunteer to do a lot of the legwork and phone calling and contract um, with some of the concessions and companies. And so for a fall festival or a harvest festival, it probably takes three to five core volunteers. And then during the night of the event, we probably have about 40 to 50 different volunteers who are serving in different capacities. During the carnival, we have what you kind of have is a place where they, people can win prizes. In order for them to win a prize, they need to submit their name and their address and their phone number. And that helps us create a mailing list. And so typically about two weeks after the Harvest Festival, they will receive a postcard in the mail uh, about an upcoming series, a sermon series, or an upcoming um, religious program that we're doing. And then during the year, we do probably about four or five different mailings to this targeted group. We'll probably average about three to 450 people um, in, during the night, and about 30 to 40 percent of those people will be unchurched or, or um, not people who regularly would come to our church community. One other tip that I'd probably give to pastors is to plan a budget early on during the year, to really plan something that's really well done and professional that's going to reach the community. It's probably going to cost you anywhere between $2,000 to $3,500 for one event. And I would work with your board of elders and your social committee and different, um, different committees in the congregation and try to pull um, some budget resources, even to try to get a grant from your local conference office for creative evangelism that'll go towards an event like this. They step out of their skin and they leave the old skin behind and then they have a brand new skin, okay? And I have one over there named Oreo. When she molded, this is what she left behind. She's a Mexican red knee. And look at the fangs under there. See the fangs? Oh, huh? <laughs> We're going to have a whole new body, so if I wear glasses, when God comes for me, I won't have to wear glasses anymore. So when Oreo molds, she's not going to have a bald bottom like that. She's going to have a brand new bottom. She's going to be bright and shiny. Well, the Harvest Festival fits really well with the mission of our congregation. In fact, our congregation's vision statement is to be an irresistible influence in the community. And so the way that we want to reach our community is by having different large events. They may not be just um, prophetic seminars or, or cooking seminars or health and temperance seminars, but they're also just different fun carnivals and different activities that families really want to be part participating in. And it helps us reach the community in a very creative way. Mm -hmm.